All right, welcome back in. This is 2021 offseason. New York Jets, specifically the quarterback position. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to cover. And before we get into it, though, I want to say I know this is still probably a sore spot for a lot of you as Jets fans. And I'm not here to paint a rosy picture. I'm not here to spread sunshine. I'm not here to give you rainbows and, and happy faces. And I'm not here to tell you that everything is going to be better and wonderful. And I'm not here to find silver linings in those dark clouds that are still hanging over the Jets organization from not being able to draft Trevor Lawrence. Okay, it absolutely is the pits that we're not going to be able to get Trevor Lawrence. Okay, and there's just no happy faces on that. And there probably won't be for as long as Trevor Lawrence is playing well in the NFL. Okay, now having said that, you as Jets fans, I know, are used to bad teams and bad breaks all the time. So for you, it's probably just another day in the office, but this this still sucks. You need to have your hopes built up that high that you've got a good chance of getting that good a player who looks like he's going to be that good for that long, and then it's completely dashed. Now, personally, if I'm Joe Douglas, I'm going to call down to Jacksonville headquarters, and I'm going to see if there's any way at any price that they might consider giving up that first overall pick. I don't think Jacksonville's going to do that. I don't even think Jacksonville's going to answer the phone on that kind of call. If I were the Jaguars, I wouldn't be entertaining that kind of a phone call at all. But if I'm Joe Douglas, and I'm desperate, and I really want Trevor Lawrence, for that matter, if I'm anybody else in the league who needs a quarterback for the next couple of years, I'm going to be calling down to Jacksonville and seeing if there is at least a price. And again, I don't think there's any chance that's going to happen. But I make the phone call. As a matter of fact, I probably call two or three times. Any further discussions that we have here at quarterback depend exclusively, completely, on what you think about Sam Darnold at quarterback. You can't make any more decisions at quarterback until you get past what you feel about Sam Darnold. And what I personally feel about Sam Darnold is not too good. He's not without hope. I still think that Sam Darnold is the kind of quarterback who, with a good roster, a good defense, good weapons around him, could conceivably take a team to the playoffs at some point and maybe even win a playoff game. But for the most part, I think any hopes of Sam Darnold being a franchise quarterback are completely gone. This was the year, to me, year three is kind of always the year, unless you just eliminate the possibilities earlier. But certainly by year three, and I think I said this in the last offseason, if you haven't seen him take another step forward, then it's time to be moving on at quarterback. And I think that time is now. You know, in the first two seasons, he was riddled with injuries, and the offensive line was terrible, and he just didn't have too many people to throw to. But that was different this year. Even though he had the injuries, when he was on the field, he had a better offensive line to play behind. Not a great O-line, but a competitive O-line. You saw him have better receivers to throw to, Again, not a great receiving core, but they were competent. There were guys to throw to. And you actually saw him kind of take a step back this season, if anything. You certainly didn't see him take any steps forward. It actually looked like he maybe regressed. So my feel is any hopes, any idea that Sam Darnold could still be a franchise quarterback are almost 100% completely gone. My best hope then moving forward, whether it's the Jets or somebody else that takes him, is that this guy has shown me enough where I think maybe he could be somewhat of a decent quarterback in this league as long as I put tons of talent around him and I have a great defense. So that's not saying a lot. I think the range for Sam Darnold is somewhere between backup quarterback and halfway competitive starter who at least gives you a chance to compete in a game. I think that's where Sam Darnold is. I don't think I'm going to get too much argument on that. For those of you who are still holding out hope, I understand but I think most of us see it the same way on that. So having said that, if, if that is what Sam Darnold is, what do you do with him? Um, do I put the fifth-year option on him? Do I trade him? Do I keep him for another season and then basically just watch him walk away for nothing? Um, the popular thing to do right now, the trendy thing to do right now, the thing that you're going to see most often is trade him away. And I'm all in favor of that if – I'm getting good value back. I'm not going to trade him away for a fourth or fifth round draft pick just to wash my hands clean of him. I think that's an emotional knee-jerk reaction. It's a little bit childish, honestly, to just say, I just want to get rid of him just to kind of wash my hands free of whatever I've been dealing with the past three seasons. 
that's not good. If I can get a second round draft pick, I'll think about it. If I can get a two and a five, I'm probably in. I'm not just going to give him away just because I'm, I want to be done with him. That's not a good way to run a franchise. That's not a good way to do much of anything in life, okay? So if you want to trade him, I'm, I'm on board with that. Let's make sure we get something good back for him. If not, if I can't get something good back for him, I'm more than happy to keep him around for his fourth season, let him compete with somebody else, Justin Fields or Zach Wilson or somebody else for the starting spot. And, you know, he's a high-quality guy. He seems to be a high-character guy. For those of you who maybe are worried about some kind of a locker room battle, today's NFL athletes, by and large, don't tend to take sides that strongly unless the usual exception of that is you've got a guy who's been in town for eight years, seven, eight years, and he's done some winning. And you've got some guys who have been his teammates for a while. For the most part, though, today's athletes, especially in the NFL, they're just like, well, whoever's playing at quarterback, we're in. Let's go win a game. And that's very different, I think, from what you used to see in the 80s and the 90s and even going farther back. Whoever was the entrenched starter tended to get a lot of support, even though the backup guy may have been coming, on, coming in and playing pretty well. You don't see as many locker room divides anymore in the NFL, except when you have a long-established starter who's still hanging around and some guys still want him to keep playing. I don't think that's the case here with Sam Darnold. I, I wouldn't say he's a well-entrenched starter. He's a guy who's been in and out. He's a guy who's been inconsistent. You went 2-14 and 14 with him. I don't think too many guys are attached to the idea of him being the starter, so I wouldn't worry about too much locker room distractions there. And I don't think Sam Darnold's that kind of guy anyway. So, personally, um, I, I'm all in favor of trading him away. If you get good value, I'm all in favor of keeping him for his fourth season. If you can't get good value... Keep this in mind, too, on the money side of things. If you trade him away, his $9 million cap hit, you don't get to just wipe that off the books. $5 million of that right here, $5 million of that is signing bonus that he got paid when he was first drafted into the league. It's still on the books. Even if you trade him away, that $5 million is still on the books for you this year. So you only save... $4 million in cap space if you were to trade him away. So it's not like money-wise, this is just an easy push-off. Five of that money stays and four of it goes to the next team if you were to trade him away. What about that fifth-year option? That fifth-year option um, is $25 million. So, And because of the new collective bargaining agreement, it's fully guaranteed. So basically the Jets have a couple of months, and I, I forget when they have to do this, they have a couple of months here to decide whether or not they're going to put the fifth-year option on any player, Sam Darnold or anybody else who was drafted in the first round, and this is their uh, this would be their uh, fourth season coming up. They've got to make that decision now. And if they do, if they make that decision, then the whole thing's guaranteed. It used to be that it was only guaranteed if a guy had a season-ending injury, and then that fifth-year option was guaranteed. But now, thanks to the new collective bargaining agreement, if the Jets put on the fifth-year option right now in a couple of months, then the whole thing's guaranteed, which means they're on the hook for $25 million in 2022. And, of course, nobody's going to do that. Absolutely nobody is going to do that. So this fifth-year option is not going to happen at all. Uh, that gold brick is just not going to happen for Sam Darnold, of course. The trade could happen. In my opinion, it only should happen if it makes sense, if it's good value. And keeping him on the team, I think, is still a worthwhile option because he's a good character guy. There's a chance he could still compete for the starting job. And he might even look better in year four. His value could go up, but then you wouldn't really be able to trade him away because you don't have the rights to him anymore. So, you know, basically the choice comes down to, for Sam Darnold, do you want to trade him away for something right now or do you want to keep him on the team for one more year? and see what he can do. Most of you, I'm sure, are probably going to want to trade him away, and that's fine as long as you get something good out of it. Who are we going to get? Uh, I, I don't know if I already covered this or not, but Justin Fields, Zach Wilson, personally, I test. I like uh, Justin Fields. Some of you may want to trade down, pick up Zach Wilson. If you get a good draft haul and if you're not in favor of Justin Fields, I, I get that. But personally, from what I've seen, I'd just rather have Justin Fields playing quarterback for me next year. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of deep dive research on that. Most of the experts I know are still in favor of Justin Fields. 
when I watch Justin Fields on film, and he passes the eye test for me. I, I like him. I don't love what he does, but I like I like what he has to offer at the quarterback position. And I think I'd love to see him in a Jets uniform for the next couple of seasons and see what he can do. I think he's very much worth that second uh, pick overall. And But for those of you who maybe are not sold on Justin Fields, I totally understand the, the idea of trading down maybe to number six or number seven, somewhere in there, maybe with the Detroit Lions or a team like that who's looking to – to get a new quarterback. So that's what I would do on Sam Darnold. That's what I would do here in the draft, probably Justin Fields. Joe Flacco, if you let go of Sam Darnold, if you trade him away, then I'm bringing Joe Flacco back. Joe Flacco is not a starter anymore, nor should he be. But he's still a valuable backup. You only paid him $1.3 million last season. I'm sure you could get him back for about the same amount. That's worth every penny for a backup quarterback. I would like to have Joe Flacco back for $1.3 million. Um, again, he played like a backup. Um, he gave you a chance to win. Like Joe Flacco always has, he leaves you kind of scratching your head a couple of times a game, wondering why did he do that. That's always been the MO for, for Joe Flacco, so no surprise there. But I would like to have him back at backup quarterback unless somebody else just jumps off the board that you would like to have that you can afford. Uh, Morgan, of course, fourth-round draft pick from Florida International or Florida Atlantic. I don't remember which. Don't know enough about him yet to really know what he can do in the NFL, but I'm sure he'll still be around. He's only costing you a million dollars as well. All right, that's it. Um, there's probably more we can talk about, but that's enough for today. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you later. Goodbye.